Hi guys, Rachel here from reachthestamper.wordpress.com and today I'm going to show you how to make this really cute little treat box that I teased you about last week on Facebook. This is actually from um, my son's Play-Doh set. It's a pizza box and I'm always looking for new ideas so I thought this would be really cute to be able to do this as a treat box. But it took me a little bit to try to figure it out because of the measurements and whatnot. Mine is a tiny bit smaller than what this one is. As you can see, this doesn't stick together so well because it's been used very much. Mine looks like this. So this is a Christmas version that I did. And this is using the Happy Ornament stamp that is in the new 2016 holiday catalog. And then I also use the Pretty, Pro Pretty Pines Thinlets to make these little wispy leaves. And then I use the... Uh, this Christmas is what it's called, I think. Let me see. This Christmas, Specialty Designer Series Paper. This is in the annual catalog. It's really pretty. It's got a lot of fun uh, colors and patterns to it. I actually made a really pretty spinner card out of that. But I thought it would be fun to do something different. This one, I ended up using the blender pen, and I used Cherry Cobbler and Garden Green with the blender pen, and then I went over it with Wink of Stella. I'm sure it does it absolutely no justice. It is really gorgeous in person because it's very sparkly. And then I also used the uh, silver embossing powder for this to outline it before I colored it in. So what we're going to do, let me get this out of the way, is we're going to make a Halloween version using the Jar of Haunts stamp set. This is in the uh, holiday catalog, the 2016 holiday catalog. If you don't have one, shoot me an email with your name and full mailing address. I'll be happy to send you one. And basically, I'm going to show you guys how to cut it. I'm going to decorate it for you, but I didn't want to bore you with having to figure out what it was that you had to do with it. So my videos are long enough as it is. I don't think you need me making that any longer than it already is. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead with the um, Simply Scored. And just as an FYI, this box is about four by four and a quarter. So you could definitely fit um, the mini M&M packs, Ghirardelli chocolates. You could fit a lot of stuff in this. It is pretty good, pretty good size. It's about an inch high so it definitely has some size to it you could fit a lot of really cute things gift cards if you wanted to do this instead of giving a card okay so our paper is eight and a half by 12 and what we're going to do is we're going to start by scoring the 12 inch side i wanted to do this one black but i didn't have any 12 by 12 black paper so this is the craft card stock that is in the um regular i'm sorry the regular annual catalog okay so 12 inches by eight and a half and i'm going to tell you right now the eight and a half we aren't really going to use we're going to definitely end up trimming it down probably almost to about seven and a half just to get the sides to fold in nicely but if you have that size you can go ahead and start with it because the trimming is going to be objective to what you think is going to work the best okay so we're going to start by scoring at three quarters of an inch five inches five and three quarters, 10 and one eighth, 11 and 11 and one eighth. And I will, as always, put all these measurements on my blog for you. So you don't have to worry about trying to feverishly write them down. Let me just go over these one more time. All right. And then we're going to turn. And the way I did this, I originally had all these mapped out, but it was a little confusing. So what I ended up doing instead was I just kind of, I'm going to flip it halfway through. So now we're on the eight and a half inch side and we're going to score it at one, one and an eighth, which is pretty much right next to it. We're making a little bit of a ledge. One and seven eighths, which is right before the two. Oh, I get one and seven eighths in there. I'll hold on here. Make sure I'm right. There we go. We're going to go two anyway, and then two. So we're going to pick that score line. If you ever have trouble scoring, um, if you rub a sheet of wax paper on it, it makes this much easier to use. So that's just another little tip. So again, we're going to score back on this side. We just turn the paper around at one, one and one eighth, one and seven eighths, which is right again before the two, and two. Okay? So we're going to put this away. And now we're going to do a little folding with our bone folder. And we're going to trim this up a little bit as well. Okay, so I'm going to just grab my bone folder. Actually, let's go this way. This one has the double lip. So when it has the two lines next to each other, 
It's honestly easier just to do it with your fingers. So on this whole side here, I'm going to just do this with my fingers because we're really kind of just making a little, um, I don't even know what you call it. It's like a little ledge here. So instead of the pieces being flat next to each other, it's just like a little bit of a lip. So when you're, when you're doing these with the doubles, you can certainly fold it with your bone folder, but you don't have to. I found it was, well, easier when I was using the other cardstock. Let's put it that way. Let me do the two first. And we'll do the... It kind of gives it this little lip of where you're going to tuck everything in. Okay, so same thing again. We're just folding. Folding. And some of this is definitely going to get trimmed off. So again, if your paper wasn't eight and a half to start with, you could probably really get away with a seven and three quarter piece. It just, you're going to cut some off anyway. Okay, so aside from one piece missing, this is my template. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with some cutting. We're going to cut some pieces off. I'm going to see which way is easiest for me to show you. So we're cutting all the way to the second line here, and we're cutting straight across. Okay, same thing on this one. Second line cutting all the way across. So now we just have just this one tab up top. We're going to cut off this first piece here, all the way in here. Okay, same on this side. So we're going to cut all the way down. So we're closest to just that one line and then cut across. Okay, now we're going to cut this one in just with a tab, just like that. And we're gonna cut this whole piece off. Same thing over here. So cut this all the way in, because we're making a tab and just cut this piece off. And we do wanna give this right here, just separate these pieces as well. Okay, and you can, while you're at it, give this just a little bit of a trim because this is gonna just tuck right inside. It does not need to be a square. You also don't have to trim this. I just find that it folds together a little bit easier. Okay, so now we're down here at the bottom. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut off this first little corner, just the little corner to the edge. Same thing on this one. So cut to that second ledge. Okay, just like that. Okay, now we're gonna cut this in and cut this in. Oops, forgot to take that little piece off. Hold on, I'll do that in one second. Cut that in, just trim this little smidge off. Okay, so you can see we're still following our piece here. Now we're going to trim off this little edge here and the second. Trim this little edge here and the second. Okay, so there we go. We are almost lined up. The only thing we're going to do now is just a little bit of trimming just so it folds in nicer. Now, these pieces right here, if you fold this right now, actually, I have to do one more little spot here. Sorry. Trim in. Trim in. Okay. So make sure we're all on the same page. Okay. So right now, if you take these little pieces and you're going to fold them in like this, this is never going to fold shut. So what you want to do is you want to take and trim off part of the edge here. It doesn't really matter how much because it's kind of just overlapping. So I'd say a good quarter of an inch. And then I just gave this a nice trim in so it would fold nicely. So kind of just give it a little wedge there. Okay. And then same thing on this side. I'm going to cut off probably a good quarter inch. And then give this a nice trim in on the side. Okay, same thing here. Okay, and then that should be it. Let me just make sure this looks correct to me. Okay, so we're going to fold this piece in. This piece in. Just like that. And then this piece is going to fold up. Hold on, up. And over and in. Actually, you know what? I think we can take these little dudes off here as well. Take this one off. And 
we'll just give that a little bit of a trim in. Okay, so let's see. So here's what we have, okay? So we have our little box. Our box is actually slightly bigger than the box that we started out with. So what we're gonna do is we're going to go ahead and just fold this in just to make sure everything fits. So all of these are gonna fold over on each other, just like that. And there's that piece. And then this piece is gonna fold down, okay? And we're gonna put adhesive there. And then this one is gonna fold in like that. We're gonna put adhesive on this as well. I find it closes better. And fold this in just like that. So there you have a little box. So this one is more of a rectangle. This is a square. Um, again, I'll put all of the dimensions on here, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you how to put it together with glue because I find I would hate to give this to somebody and then they're like, great, what do I do with this now? So I find that if you put a little bit of adhesive on it, it's definitely going to stick better. And I am going to use tear and tape. I know it'll probably be quicker to use snail, but I'm going to use tear and tape just so you can see what I mean. So I'm going to just put one piece in the middle here and then I'm going to use snail on a couple little bits. One piece on the side. And you could also use, um, if you wanted to use the liquid glue, but I think that would be a little bit messy. If you still have sticky strip, you could use that, but the tear and tape works really nicely. So we have our adhesive on our three strips there, and then we're going to put some snail on these inside pieces, okay? So fold this in and put some snail. You could use glue dots as well if you like. Okay, and then on this one as well. And same thing over here. So, let me just get that little piece off. We're going to go ahead and remove our protector. You know what? I just thought of a good idea. I thought since this is bigger than what I anticipated it to be, I'm going to change something up a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and tuck these parts in and just adhere them in. Same thing on this side. Okay, just like that. So tuck these in first. Same thing with this one, tuck it in. It doesn't have to be tight. So I'm gonna move this one over just a smidge. That way if somebody opens it a little bit rough, they have a little give. Now we're gonna tuck the sides down and we're gonna tuck the top down. Okay, so just give it a nice firm press just to get that tear and tape to stick. And then we're just gonna close the lid just Oh, let me give this one just a smidge of a trim. This might help just a little bit. When you give these things like this little wedge edge, I don't even know what you call it. A lady I watch videos always says a trim. <laughs> it just tends to make them tuck in a little bit nicer so that way you don't have to get into an argument with your little box before you put it together. Okay. So there's your ledge. So again, like I said, this is a little bit bigger than what we started out with. So what I'm going to do is this is about, I'll say about five by eh, this four and a quarter, a little bit less than four and a quarter. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on the side and I want to grab one thing. See if I can find it real quick. I thought this would be fun. This is the Halloween night uh, specialty designer series paper. This is in the holiday catalog as well. How about a little cobweb action? That'll be fun. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just trim out a piece. And I think I said this was about, we'll go with five by yeah, a little bit less than four and a quarter. Cause this'll be cute too. So I'm gonna go with five. Put that down there and we'll go to four and a quarter, which I think is, we'll say right about there. Just flip this over, move this to the four and a smidge, and then I'm going to cut it to five. Okay, and that should fit on there absolutely perfectly. If you don't have a Stampin' trimmer, I highly recommend it. I have not, not had mine for very long, but I really love it. It's so much easier to cut with than what I was using prior. So I'm going to put that there, and I'll put my little pumpkin here. And then I have my little spooky treat for you to eat, okay? So I'm going to just put this down with some snail. And I'm going to just, whoops, I'm going to just open this up just so I get it centered nicely. Okay, 
I'm gonna put my spooky treat down. And this is a lot bigger, so you could definitely put way more things here if you wanted to. And I'm gonna put this down with a couple dimensionals. You could fit probably almost a full-size candy bar in there now. We put This is from the um, Jar of Haunts. This is just the pumpkin. So there you go. And you could decorate this any way you like. You could make this for Thanksgiving. This would be great for Thanksgiving if you wanted to put a little something out on the table before dinner. You could use it with any of these. It would definitely fit these cool little frame guys on here. The uh, little mason jars, especially the spooky one. That would be really fun as well. Christmas, Halloween, any any old time, really, Hanukkah, you could use it for anything. So if you have any questions, please feel free to shoot me an email. You can reach me at rachthestamper at gmail.com. You can get all of these supplies and more in my online store 24-7 at rachthestamper at stampinup.net. Also, if you haven't already, I would love for you to follow me on my blog, which is rachthestamper.wordpress.com. You can also follow along with me on Facebook at Rach the Stamper, Instagram, and Pinterest as well. Thanks for taking time to watch, guys. I hope you love this. And also, let me know what you think. If you think it's bright enough with the white background and the extra lighting I got in, I hope that helped you guys. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.